splendorous, imposing, majestic, the Church of Virgin Mary Chrysospiliotissa passed through various calamities, experienced changes, and managed to remain standing until today at the historical center of the city of Athens at number 60 Ielu Street. The history of the church begins in the years of the Ottoman rule, when in 1705 the first church of small dimensions dedicated to Virgin Mary was constructed in the era of the Greek Revolution, and in particular in 1827, during the siege of Athens by Kutai, the church suffered inestimable damage. After the establishment of the Greek state, it was repaired and was able to operate again in 1835. However, its small space could not cover the needs of the faithful, and in 1846 efforts for the construction of a third, larger this time, church commenced. To this end, with the aid of Spiros Pavlidis, owner of the chocolate industry on Ielu Street, land lots were purchased around the church, whose foundations were in turn laid in 1863. The plans of the new church were undertaken by the architect Dimitrios Zizos, while the construction works were supervised initially by Panagis Kalkos and subsequently by Ernest Zilla. From the older church was transferred also the icon of Virgin Mary named as Chrysospiliotissa, a copy of the holy icon of the monastery of the big cave of Mount Aphas, which is manufactured of wax mastic and which also attributed the nickname to the church. The eminent architect Cezos designed a church in which Byzantine and ancient Greek elements were harmonically combined, while Panagis Kalkos added some neoclassical elements. Thus, one can observe the Byzantine isodomic cloison masonry and the two light windows being combined in an elaborate manner with the neoclassical ceramic and marble decorative features. When the torch of the completion of the building passed on to Ernest Zilla, the latter altered the plans of the dome on the basis of his own standards. However, owing to reactions from the parish commissioners who asked for the initial dome of Zizos to be constructed, Silla resigned. The completion of the dome was undertaken by the then mayor of Athens and civil engineer Dimitrios Soutsos. Unfortunately, the end result does not show consistency with the residual building, resulting in the dome appearing rather inferior and tasteless in relation to the magnificent church. It is a three-aisle domed basilica on which loom elaborate bell towers with impressive domed roofs. The two bell towers on either side of the narthex are of marble, eight-sided, out of which the northern was added in 1888 and the southern in 1892. Exceptional is their building method with blocks aided by tiles. Regarding the interior decoration of immaculate aesthetics and the columns of the church with the elaborate Corinthian capitals, one is brought to aesthetic awe by the carved marble templon, which was designed by Zilla. The latter belongs to the category of the simple eclectic templons with the central part elevated. The internal view of the church is impressive, especially when one approaches the central transverse axis. The site of the tall dome, the marble templon, and the other marble architectural features compose a construction which is impressive and comfortable. The interior space is particularly dark as is the case with the Helino-Byzantine churches, arc are also the side porticos which support the gallery. The feeling of the lack of adequate lighting is augmented also by the dark-colored oil column murals. In the conch of the sanctuary looms Virgin Mary Platatera. The depiction bears the signature of Caruso's and dates back to 1971. Inscription bottom right, by hand of Dionysios Caruso's, Parametrically, and on the face of the conch of the sanctuary, there are depicted in busts, wealth prophets, the Holy Spirit, and two church fathers. At the center of the dome looms Christ Panto Crater, who is surrounded by four superimposed bands which depict an unseal inscription, pomets, crosses, winged heads, and the starry night. On the cylindrical body and between the windows, the twelve apostles are depicted. A significant element of the interior mural decoration is the ornamentation, which was made by Vasilios Cotas and Antonios Petas. The ornamentation is added harmoniously to the pictorial mural program, 
thus contributing to the aesthetic homogeneity of the ensemble. A prevalent role in the ornamentation is played by the blue starry sky, which covers the apses and the cross vaults. 